It's the Spider-Man meme of motherboard reviews. Ooh, they've slimmed down the box just a bit, but it's gotten thicker. So the X570 Tai Chi, I've already reviewed. It's still a great board, you should check it out. This is a board that I use almost constantly because it's part of our test bench. We do a lot of stuff with it. I particularly like the Azeroc BIOSes. It can be a little buggy sometimes, but they unlock all the options for you, which is really nice. This is the Razer edition of that motherboard. Some of the people in the level one forums noticed that sometimes Azeroc Polychrome struggles a little bit. Well, this is something that is fully compatible with Razer Synapse. You don't need Polychrome. You can do everything from the Razer control software with all of your Razer accessories. So if I were to, for example, release the Kraken, as I have, then the RGB controls for this headset, mouse, mouse pad, keyboard, whatever Razer accessories you have, will work perfectly with the Razer Synapse software, including the motherboard and any other accessories that you have in your system or as part of your system or as you know, part of your battle station. But first, let's see how the motherboard holds up. Now I'm working on the X570 version of this board. If you're interested in a lower cost board with a little simplified, a little bit simpler motherboard layout, there is also the B550 motherboard uh, version of this as well, which also has the Razer integration, uh, Razer Synapse and all that. So check that out if you want a, a slightly different take on the Razer integration. Now this is a Razer Edition motherboard that's so sharp it could cut. In terms of the motherboard box accessory bundle, it's fairly standard fare. We have a nice premium antenna. This is for our combination Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. This is a, a very uh, good approach for the wireless antenna because you can use this. It's got, a, it's got a sticky foot on the back. You can set up this antenna. You can move it around, which is great because Wi-Fi 6 can be a little finicky. And if you can get the antenna out from around behind the computer, on top of your computer, on top of something, maybe a little bit away from the monitor, to the left of the monitor, to the right of the monitor, you may be surprised how much moving your antenna just a few inches uh, how much of a difference that makes in your signal quality and, and other parameters about your connection. So having a movable antenna like this, it is a nice inexpensive way to improve the quality of your life. In the box is a ton of M.2 accessories because this motherboard has three M.2 slots that are usable and available. And so you get the standoffs and the screws and everything with that. You also get some nice Azeroc Velcro strips. And of course the screwdriver, because this shroud here is one giant heat dissipating thing for all of your M.2s. So there's uh, proprietary screws here that I think aesthetically look pretty good. You can remove those to get at your M.2 slots. There's also four SATA six gigabit per second cables. On this side of the accessory box, you know, it's just the quick installation guide, the driver CD, uh, the Azrox sticker, and of course the installation manual. Now there's a couple other reasons why I like this board. First off, it's X570. I've always been, uh, someone who leads a little more toward the higher end when possible. I mean, it doesn't make sense. If you're not gonna use it, don't buy the features. But I like having more M.2, I like having more PCIe lanes, and you get a lot of PCI Express 4 lanes with the X570 chipset. Really the only downside is that it brings a fan. But ASRock, you know, has incorporated lessons learned in the board design and in dealing with X570. So this board has some updates. I mean, look how far down the offset is for this fan. This is, this is set up obviously for a triple slot GPU because you've got so much room between the first and second slots. You could run two three, the triple slot GPUs with this motherboard in a standard case without too much headache. You've also got pretty good right angle connections here and our USB-C connection is just high enough that it's gonna clear a backplate even on ridiculous cards that have a thick uh, backplate on, on on the back uh, part of it. We've got two 30 pin headers in addition to that USB -T, uh, USB-C header. We've got eight six gigabit per second SATA ports. We've got two internal USB 2.0 ports, which is great if you're gonna run more internal accessories for the RGB-ness. And of course, being an RGB motherboard, we have both a RGB and the old 5050 style headers at the top and bottom of the motherboard. As far as other connectors on the motherboard go, we have a total of six four pin fan headers which is pretty reasonable. I might have liked to have seen two four pin fan headers up near the top for the CPU, but as it is, they're split between here and here, and we still have another four pin fan header for your rear fan here. So I think that works. Do note that if the third M.2 slot is used, 
that will disable the bottom slot on this motherboard, so keep that in mind. We do also have a Thunderbolt header on this motherboard. I'll have to test that separately though. It's the Intersil Digital PWM. It's a 16 phase power design. There's a motherboard RAM speed support. ASRock advertises this board with up to 4666 plus. That is an OC, and that is far beyond anything I've been able to achieve on 5000 series Ryzen. Although 4000 megahertz should be readily attainable if your CPU can do it, which a little less than half of uh, CPUs out there can do it with a lot of fiddling. 3800 I think is a lot safer. One particularly exciting footnote in this motherboard is that it says ECC is supported with Pro APUs. Well, I happen to have a 4750 Pro APU from AMD, and I will be trying it in this board with ECC memory. Otherwise, ASRock is one of the few vendors that support ECC memory, and this board will support uh, one bit correction and two bit detection. However, the two bit detection option is uh, left to an OS first handling mode, which means you have to configure your OS to decide how you want to handle that. On Linux out of the box, uh, it doesn't halt anymore because that's a platform first error handling. It will do uh, a message to the kernel and then it's gonna be up to the kernel to decide what to do, whether to panic or kill the affected processes and move on, which is I think the default in newer kernels. Uh, that's, ECC is a whole, e ECC is a rabbit hole that could be an entirely separate conversation. And uh, if you wanna know more about that, let me know, let me know in the comments. And just in case you didn't realize, this platform does support 128 gigs of memory. Uh, currently the 128 gig kit that I have is from OLOY. I mean, it's 32 gigs of DIMM. So it's a dual channel, dual rank setup. It's 16 gigs per rank, which is pretty crazy. It ends up being a quad rank setup overall, but it's two ranks per channel, which is kind of hard for the memory controller in uh, Ryzen 5000 to drive at really high speeds but uh, we're gonna be doing most of our testing with 32 gigs in a dual rank configuration with two DIMMs, two 16 gig DIMMs. That's the CL14 Trident Z Neo kit, which for gaming benchmarks like at 1080p and stuff, that actually does make a fairly big difference when you're talking about really high end GPUs like the 3090 or the 6800 XT and on up. Let's take a quick look at the rear IO. Okay, so at the rear IO, we've got two antenna ports, a combo PS2 mouse and keyboard port, one HDMI port that is only for the APUs, like the 4750G that we will, we will be testing, one optical SBDI out port, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A port, that's 10 gigabit. We've got four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, those are five gigabit. And then you've also got one 10 gigabit USB type C port. The audio solution here is based on a Realtek ALC 1220 codec, but not so fast. It uses the ESS Sabre 9218 DAC for the front panel audio, which features a 130 dB signal to noise ratio on paper. I mean, that's the spec of the, of the DAC. The implementation here is pretty good. It's pretty clean. ASRock has done a good job supporting that Realtek ALC 1220 codec with the front and rear I.O. options on this motherboard, in my opinion. Our NIC at the rear I.O. is a 2.5 gigabit killer NIC. I mean, that's sort of the choice for a gaming motherboard. I would have liked to have seen dual NICs here, uh, especially on a motherboard at this price point, but the killer NIC's not a bad choice. And that's the same with our Wi-Fi 6 implementation. This is one of the few boards that's not technically an Intel Wi-Fi 6 implementation. This is the killer implementation of Wi-Fi 6, but it supports all the features that you know and love, you know, 802.11 AX, and of course you can fall back to BGN, you know, whatever, 2.5 and 5 gigahertz. It also supports Bluetooth 5.1, MU, MIMO, so it's pretty good. And it also integrates with the, um, you know, Double Shot Pro killer software. So you can actually have your wired and wireless hooked up at the same time. And uh, the traffic, it, the killer software does try to sort of do some stuff in terms of routing software from one interface to the other. But I think it's more trouble than it's worth if you've got a wired connection. But if you have a wireless connection, it can be useful for ensuring that, you know, your game or whatever gets the maximum amount of bandwidth. It gets the bandwidth priority. We need to do a build, but before we do a build, we need a processor. For this build, because it's X570, I've selected the 5900X. Now for a lot of reasons, the 5900X is kind of like the value Cadillac of the line. It's got pretty much all the features of the 5950X at a significant price savings. But if that's a little too rich for you, you can also consider the 5800X, eight cores, and the 5600X, six cores. Now from six to eight cores, for most people, for most of what you're doing, it's not that much of a bump. But from eight to 12 cores, 
That is a significant bump, especially if you're running a lot of tasks that are competing for resources. Having two chiplets means that your cache is segmented because you got double the cache, 64 megs total. But two different processes that are really intense running at the same time can basically have their own 32 megabyte playgrounds. Well, normally at this stage in your build, I'd recommend you go ahead and install the RAM, but because RAM is one of the things that I'm going to be messing around with a bit with off camera, I mean, our primary kit is that G Skill Trident Z CL14, but I test a lot of other configurations. I'm doing sort of breadth instead of depth testing, but we need the entire rest of the system. I've got this. This is the old Fractal Meshify. The new one is a lot better than this one, but I happen to have this one laying around and I don't have the other one. Well, I've got the, I've got the big one. I got the Meshify 2 XL, but I don't have the, I don't have the, the, the reasonable sized one and there's a thread ripper in the other one. So this is pretty much good to go for motherboard already. I've got a Corsair all in one in the front for CPU cooling, which is a little overkill. But hey, I'll roll with it. Got my power supply in there already. That's a Seasonic Air. I think it's a 850. I think it's 850 watts. So it's pretty substantial. The system's basically set up and good to go. I got my fans installed. I've actually got a couple of Noctua fans in here because Noctua is good stuff. Uh, in the bottom, at least. This should be pretty good. A rear I.O. shield, it's already installed. Good job, ASRock. This motherboard does have dual eight pin power connections for the CPU, but for Ryzen, you don't need it. You're, you're not gonna, this socket is gonna melt if you push more than 200 watts through it, so. Oh, don't mind me, just getting in some time with Cyberpunk 2077 on the uh, ASRock Tai Chi X570 with the uh, Founders Edition of the RTX 3090 because of the out of the box ray tracing support for Cyberpunk. And yeah, X570 second generation, is that gonna be a thing? The VRMs here held up really well. I did testing with both a 5900X and a 5950. The 5950, you know, you do have a fair bit of headroom if you're willing to overclock it and throw your warranty away. Throw the warranty away on an $800 processor, $550 processor. That is a little rich for my blood, but if you want to do it, the power delivery system on the Tai Chi is going to do it for you. I also liked the, the fact that the BIOS was as polished as it was, and I was surprised that I could control Razer Synapse from the BIOS. Like, I wasn't expecting that because, you know, some boards will let you do BIOS RGB control, some not, even from ASRock, but this motherboard would actually still let you do at least basic RGB controls from the BIOS, including disabling them completely. Of course, you've also got the awesome ASRock fantastic tuning. Good job, ASRock. And a lot of the other accoutrement that you'd expect from ASRock motherboards. I also tested Linux support with this, and because it is a standard Razer controller, the open Razer thing seemed like it was gonna work, but I'm gonna have to do a follow-up video on that if, if anybody is interested in that. AVR ISP. It's Atmel. Why is it Atmel? Why? That's good. If you're looking for support on the uh, Tai Chi Razer Edition, maybe, just maybe skip that for Linux. It's got the killer Wi-Fi, which is kind of supported in Linux in some scenarios. But we can see the Ubuntu 20.04 installer can't find the wireless NIC, or it can find it, but no firmware. And then the wired NIC is also not detected. So skip Linux unless you know what you're getting into. Now to be sure the Wi-Fi is functional if you jump, jump through some hoops, just be aware of that. Uh, ECC memory support on this board is reported as working correctly. And this is also one of the few boards that advertises Ryzen uh, Pro ECC support. So I've got a 4750G Ryzen Pro. So the Pro APUs basically um, support ECC. So I'll be revisiting that in a separate video. But a preliminary examination with the 5900X, it looks like single bit errors are uh, detected and corrected. Overall, I think ASRock has done a good job putting this motherboard together. It is a, a little bit of a premium price point. There are less expensive X570 motherboards. You might check out, say, like the X570 Velocita, the Phantom Gaming Velocita, Vel Velocita, Velocita, um, from ASRock to take a look if you're, if you're wanting to do a cost down option. But if you want a solid RGB implementation, because that's what Razer has been doing, 
uh, then this you'd be hard pressed to go wrong with this. And even if you don't want RGB, it's a second generation X570, so a lot of lessons learned in terms of board design has been incorporated into this board. So that's nice too. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out, and I'll see you later. Oh, don't mind me, just getting in some time with Cyberpunk 3077. 20 XD6. Alright, we need to be doing. I have such a hard time speaking.